As you know, there are many celebrities right now wearing very short hair, cute little pixie haircuts. Some of them are cut from short on the underneath, building up, and others are cut shorter on the inside, working out. Remember, when you layer from the inside and come down, you're going to have a hairstyle that's going to move sort of softer and be a little narrower. I'm going to be coming in very close from the underneath, actually working on a very classic graduation, working into sort of a short, choppy top. So let's start off at the very first section. And we're going to actually cut the hair right against the skin. Then I will be picking that hair up between my fingers in a moment. I'm going to now pull the ear down. And I will also be checking this through the comb. It's a shame we can't take ears off, isn't it? And then just <laughs> stick them back on. Did you as a kid ever play with potato men? Mm-hmm. Oh, so that wasn't just an English thing? Mr. Potato Head. Mr. Potato Head, yeah. I used to love that. Yeah, you could always put their extremities back. Coming through, nice strong line. Remember that this is a classic hairstyle, and in classic hairstyles, it's all about learning the rules before you break the rules. So here, we're graduating, and graduation's the slow process of building weight. So as I work through here, I have to look. Now, I've already pre-cut my other side, so I've got to now look at how the hair is lifting up from the head, looking at the balance. And you can see from my previous side how we've got this lovely graduation, nice and snug here, and a beautiful round shape. So what I'm striving for is a very strong technique here and a choppy top. So we have that sort of nice contrast between the textures. So now I'm going to come in here right at the nape of the neck. And coming in nice and snug. My fingers parallel to my section. Coming all the way down into the nape. Now, sectioning hair is not just merely a means of getting the hair out of the way. Sectioning hair is your map, it's your blueprint, it's your GPS for telling you where you're going to go. And I cannot emphasize enough the importance of understanding how to build, round, and lighten weight.
We just recently created a fundamental series, and in that series we go over the importance of understanding angles and how they function. So if you haven't checked it out on the website, um, after the show, why don't you go to the fundamentals, and I will explain some very important points that maybe in your training nobody told you about. And graduating my line... Now coming through into the nape of the neck for this classic graduation. Now, you've got to take clean sections, sections small enough that you can see your guideline on the underneath. And as I'm working through here, making sure that I am creating that tightness in the nape of the neck. Now, what I have noticed when I work with uh, my students is that sometimes the danger area is removing the weight at the, cramp, at the occipital bone. And so therefore it's really important to tuck your fingers into the nape of the neck and not graduate above the occipital bone. That's extremely important. So here at the side, you can see I'm coming back in, nice and snug, diagonal section into the back, and I'm going to slowly walk around the head. So, imagine that there'd be a circle on the floor, and your fingers are following the line of the circle. And within that circle, it's actually a traveling guideline. So notice here, as I'm angling in, you see how tight I am right into the nape of the neck? And obviously, I'm going to be finishing this with some scissor over comb work at the very, very end, which is also extremely important. So I don't want to pull away. I don't want to pull my hands out, as in doing this. I want to be tight, tight, tight. So I am walking around the head shape, coming right the way through to there. And can you see that tight angle going in, leaving the length at the occipital bone, and then rounding through the top afterwards. So a classic, a very important one to learn, uh, great in barbering. Now this hairstyle actually, this hairstyle was originally uh, worn by men, believe it or not. And I have a, a favorite book that I actually used when I was at college. It was the, it's called The First 5,000 Years of Hairdressing. And in this book, it shows images of men's hairstyles that most of us are wearing today. And when I say most of us are wearing today, it's ladies are wearing today. But this hairstyle was very, very popular in the 1920s. And when women had their hair, they called it shingled into the nape of the neck, it was something that was very popular. So first of all, it started off with a bob, that lovely Louise Brooks bob. And then it went into this lovely, very elegant uh, effect. And when you have a client who has a beautiful head shape, I think this is a marvelous thing to do. And um, what we have actually created on Hair Designer TV is a lookbook. So our members on Hair Designer TV can now use a lookbook while they're doing their consultation with a client and be able to quickly and easily reference a hairstyle by going through the lookbook and making sure that you're both on the same page. For those of you who don't have very much time to do a consultation, what I would suggest is that while you're blow drying your client's hair, we all know that that's sort of dead time uh, when we're blow drying, that will be the time to put the lookbook in your client's lap and say, you know what, why don't you have a look through some of these images? Um, I'm loving what I'm doing on your hair today, but what you're actually doing is planting the seed for tomorrow. So what you're saying to your client is, okay, take a look through this book and see if there's anything that you'd like to kind of grow your hair into, or the next time you come to me, a variation in how we blow dry it. Remember that we're very fortunate right now. We have the opportunity to do editorial styling on our clients, which is absolutely amazing. So even a hairstyle as uh, short as Dina's hair, there are many different ways to dry this. So as you can see now, I am just dusting through the top surface one more time, uh, just blending my layers into 
my graduation and uh, pointing into here. Now this type of hair texture doesn't really like the razor. Um, the, the bleached hair is, is, is not really the friend of the razor. So what I want to do is put strength into the hair. So I've got this cute little choppy top. I'm going to just turn Dina around so that you can see the importance of scissor over comb and how critical that is as we go through. So working in the direction of the hair, notice here, rhythm, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. The direc direction in which the hair is growing. And as I come up through here, again, the rhythm, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, or if you're adventurous, one, two, three, four. <laughs> And you just glide up. Now notice that my blade is not like this. It is tilted and tilted this way. So here's the head. I want to make sure you see this. The comb is coming up like this. And my scissors are not like that to the hair. They're tilted. Does that make sense? Can you see that, guys? Good. Oh, anyway. We're kind of done. So Joe's going to put a little bit of toner on the hair. I'm going <laughs> to, I'm going to rub you. Make a wish. Make a wish. Make a wish. It feels so good. Oh, it makes me want to have my hair. You're like Natalie Cole, Natalie Kidman. No, Natalie Portman. Portman. <laughs> it's time to take a break. We'll be back real soon.